Hi, Gloria Brooks here, founder of Nature Glows eScience. Today, I'm really super excited to talk to you about homeschool math journals. So I know many of you have heard me tell this story before, but back in uh, 1997, I was first introduced to the concepts of mathematics found everywhere around us in the natural world. I call it nature's numbers, patterns, and geometric shapes. And uh, it was introduced to me in a hardback, blue hardback time life book by David Bergamini called Mathematics. And I went, I'm trying to simplify, you know, condense the story here, but uh, what happened was I could not find very, very many resources. This is back in 1997, the year after I graduated from college. I just couldn't find much more information of what I call living maths, what I've uh, called um, as math art, and I have four, four, a four course bundle that I offer for homeschoolers uh, for ages 10 to 18, ideally. Okay, and so that was the beginning of the journey. the The mathematics time life book. Fast forward 2003, where I was ended up being a burned out teacher, really tired of the traditional education scene and really wanted to be more progressive, but uh, basically in a school where I had to teach what I was being paid to teach, which was divided subjects, kids sitting in their seats. But I was really discontented with that and wanted change, which I got in uh, the form of Don Tolman, a health and wellness teacher and a really fabulous K through 12 teacher coach. Um, who teaches the living maths and he reintroduced me to nature's numbers patterns and geometric shapes so I ended up going on a seven-year photographic journey carrying with me always my camera and my let me flip my camera around and show you and my math journals and I have others but these are the ones that I'm carrying with me in my camper van the Green Queen um, but let me just show you the inside, and I hope I can, yeah. Um, so this, this here from my journal is the retelling, uh, or my story of finding my very first nest that I actually dislodged from a tree. Let's turn around so you can get the light on here. Hope that lighting is good. <clears throat> so in front of my apartment, apartment 418 to be exact, <laughs> this was in Elton, Maryland on oh wow look december 29th 2003 so i found uh this nest found in the fork of the tree approximately nine feet high from the ground total tree height approximately 15 feet to 16 feet high that was the tree the total height and i drew a little diagram here um there's the nest in the tree uh width of I think the crown of the tree, four to five feet across. Um, let's see, <laughs> let's see if I can read my own handwriting. Um, branches tended to lean to the right, probably because of the sunlight. All right, and turn the page. So if my identification, let's see if. I want to make sure you can read this with me. If my identification is correct, I believe the tree to be a sugar maple. I kept a sample of a branch with young buds, a flower hanging, and two leaf samples. The leaves are five lobed like a tree. Identical book said. <laughs> the nest's arrangement from the protection of the rain was probably the leaves when they were on the tree. Size of the nest from the longest sides little letter a diameter across from the outside is five inches three sixteenth of an inch diameter across from the inside the nest is four and a half inches across depth of the nest two and a half inches so notice here we have living math going on and lots of it and that was my epiphany that was what i spent seven years doing taking pictures of uh, nature's patterns, numbers and shapes, um, writing journal pages, drawing pictures, making sketches, 
and that's what I encourage you to do for your family. And I've just released my new guide called Math Learning Secrets where I have where I offer to you my five secrets math learning framework. And I show you how you can build living math into your homeschool day and how you can be best of all liberated from academic maths drudgery from basic math all the way up to higher maths. You can liberate yourself from you know, the rigid lock step by step curriculum that we are told that we need to cram down our kids throats. I'm here to tell you, you don't need to go through 12 years of drudgery with your kids if it is drudgery to you. Some kids love and adore, you know, incremental math and that's super incredibly awesome, but a lot of kids don't and a lot of adults don't. I was one of those kids, you know, or the, the curriculum was shoved down my throat and I did okay. Higher maths, <laughs> you know, I pulled a C, C plus sometimes. It was a struggle, it was a battle, it was hair pulling. It doesn't have to be that way. You can game school the, math, the higher maths away and just enjoy math connections all around you. Starting with journals. So let me show you my next journal. This one, uh, let's see. So this is my personal log of all my research findings, discoveries, personal ramas of mathematics and the sciences. Now at the time, um, the word rhema, uh, I forget what that means. It's, a, it's terminology that we used in our church that I belonged to at the time. So here we have table of contents. I strongly suggest having a table of contents. <clears throat> and hang on, I'm doing this all one handed. so. Bear with me a moment <laughs> while well, the camera flies around. So I want to show you, this was a really great moment here. Um, over 3,000 different bees is this one. So I found this really interesting insect. I'm trying to get the lighting right here. Okay. So it was gold and yellow, had black eyes. Oh, it's a gold-backed snipe fly, it's a type of fly. Uh, white markings on its black, white markings on black background. It was a very striking insect. Um, and then I drew this picture of, I think it's a gypsy moth caterpillar. Uh, this guy was tough to sketch and count. He was on the move. Yeah, so I found this caterpillar by a creek in a tree and I decided to capture its mathematics in this drawing. So we have shorter white hairs um, stuck on its sides. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry, my handwriting. Um, black velvet uh, horns with hairs protruding forward. Four times four is 16 protruding slate gray bumps. These bumps are orange. 24 total orange protruding bumps or tubercles. So these little dots that I drew here, they were all protruding with these hairs sticking out. So here you can see, <clears throat> I'm not gonna read it all, um, but I was very careful to do a detailed sketch and the mathematics were just brilliant. I mean, it's all there. And that's a perfect example of living mathematics. Here we have a spectacular example from just a simple, gym, beautiful gypsy moth of multiplication going on. You know, you count the dots and how many lines and, you know, how many dots in that line. It's, it's such beautiful multiplication, you know, and it's right there outside and your kids can, can be getting sunshine and exercise and, um, yeah, I, I highly recommend keeping a math journal. And it's freestyle, like it's according to the kids' interests and just creative fun. All right, so I would just suggest getting like just blank journals, have your kids pick them out. They can also create their own journals out of cereal boxes and paper. I had a student do that years ago, back in 2010, when I had my homeschool in-person nature-based program, Heathcote Art and Science Center. My student, Ursa, created her own journal out of cereal boxes. How cool is that, right? 
and then just get outside go hiking walking exploring around your backyard and just whatever fancy whatever tickles your fancy you and your kids and just make sketches just like i demonstrated just like i showed you in my own journal uh, let's see what else I can show you. Okay, so I want to show you this last drawing. Um, here it is. Let's get the lighting right here. Um, this was found by one of my students, Lee, uh, July 1st, 2003. Dobson fly, I, I think it's an alder fly. I had a field guide with me to help me identify it. All right, so I had eight lower legs, furry-like protrusions, feathers from, uh, from each 